Hi everyone, welcome to part 2. Okay, Carlson has just played knight c e5. Planting a piece on the square that he's played to control and, uh, you know, resulting in good activity for his pieces. So, Svidler continued with the bishop takes e6 checks, getting back the pawn. And after uh, king h8, obviously the best move, he played rook d1, pinning the knight and you know taking control of the important d file which is totally open and uh, Carlson chose to solve the pin immediately with queen c7 which again bolsters his e5 control and this is in fact the only move to keep black in the balance of the game anything else and he will be in tactical difficulty before long so it's probably seen long before it was played anyway and Svidler continued with the queen f4 which is a strong move and the idea is to pin the e5 knight uh, obviously if it moves then black loses his queen and it creates the immediate threat of rook takes d7 there's no knight takes or the queen drops and uh, there's no queen takes or the queen drops again and Carlson answered with a move that queen c7 made possible, it's clearing the way for this rook to come into the game. So now it comes over to the f file, attacking the queen, so it gains this the other totally open file with tempo. So he's uh, answering, you know, attack with attack. It's uh, it's a good play, and uh, Svidler wanted to retain the tactical threat on uh, the queen here, and the only way he can do that is I would plan his queen to g3 and uh, retain the threat of rook takes d7 but this was a slight inaccuracy and the position is now objectively equal although still very sharp and you know it's hard to believe that they're playing blindfolded it's uh, amazing with the amount of chess that grandmasters play they uh, they seem to be able to play with great accuracy blindfolded you know a lot better than uh, club players can so it's uh, yeah very impressive stuff um so yeah queen g3 slightly inaccurate uh, fritz preferred queen h4 in order to keep the pressure up although white has only a slight edge and it's interesting to note that if he plays instead uh, rook takes d7 at this point you know allowing his queen to drop uh it's actually not best to do that. The queen c6 is uh, the correct way to continue, threatening mate on g2 and forcing rook takes b7. After which comes a rook takes f4, and both white's rook and bishop here are attacked by the queen. So rook b6 is also a force. It's protected by the uh, the bishop here and it protects the, uh, the bishop here and uh, well it gets very tactical now but knight f3 check is uh, the only move if black wants to hold on to his queen and uh, there's actually no squares at the moment if you uh, look at it I suppose there's uh, this a8 what would happen there uh, or the, the rook would drop okay so needless to say Knight f3 check is uh, going to move. Now g takes f3, queen takes f3, and after bishop takes f4, queen takes f4. White has two knights and a rook against the queen, but with black having the extra pawn and uh, given the opposite color bishops, it's no surprise that Svidler chose to avoid this line. Okay, so uh, we'll return to the game. Queen g3. So now Carlson answered with knight f6. He's planning on knight h5 to gain another tempo on the queen and uh, create some threats on the f file. So knight c5, attacking the bishop here on uh, b7 and also supporting the bishop here on e6 and the knight here is supported by the bishop, which is supported by the queen. So it's uh, you know very nice positional play from Svidler as well who it has to be said has a very good 
overall career score against Carlson in you know standard time control games. I think he's actually got a plus score, so he's absolutely a force to be reckoned with. And it'd be great to see how he does in the candidates tournament too. And here Carlson has knight h5 with a uh, tempo. Doesn't have to worry about the bishop just yet. And slowly but surely the tables are turning in his favour, all due to the tiny inaccuracy queen g3. Carlson is such a superb player that he knows how to exploit these uh, tiny inaccuracies to the greatest possible extent. And uh, that said, the the queen g3 move wouldn't have been enough on its own to lose the game, but here's Fiddler went slightly wrong for a second time and played queen e1. And queen h3 was the best move, again with a dead equal position. After uh, queen e1, white has, sorry, black has a very sharp response to uh, go for a win. If you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. Bishop takes g2 is the move, which leaves the white king wide open and uh, threatens immediately knight f3 check, winning the queen. This is why queen e1 uh, wasn't the best move. Uh, also very strong was bishop f3, where of course it can't be taken or the queen is lost. Attacks the rook, in face the question of where to put it. and. Uh, we can play knight e2, but that has drawbacks as well. Um, but yeah, bishop takes g2. Very nice move. So king takes g2, and now knight f3. And this move not only attacks the queen, but it also threatens a mating attack with the queen takes h2. So given that the queen and h2 are attacked, uh, white's answer is forced, which is queen h1. And here it was Carlson's turn to go slightly wrong. He played knight f4 check, which is strong, but not the best. If you want to try and improve on Carlson's move, then uh, stop the video now. Knight h4 check was definitely winning. King g1 is forced. If instead uh, king h3, the only other legal move, rook f3 check forces queen takes f3 with a win after knight takes f3. Uh, if instead king takes h4, now it's going to be mate and 3, bishop f6 check, king g4, rook g3 check, h takes g3, queen takes g3 as mate. Very nice. So, um, yeah, so knight h4 check, king g1 would be forced. And now queen e5, and white is busted with too many threats to meet. He has to de defend the bishop here on e3, and uh, the bishop is tied to defending the knight. So he's definitely definitely losing material. Let's say, for example, knight 3 e4 is uh, interfering with the queen's attacking of the bishop, but now comes knight f4, where bishop takes f4, is suicide and uh, needless to say white is totally overstretched and completely lost in this position so after Carlson's knight f4 check king f2 is uh, the only saving move for Swiddler if instead bishop takes f4 queen takes f4 is totally winning for black with all kinds of nasty threats like queen g5 check and then a discovered check from the uh, the rook here after the knight moves. Uh, white would have to play knight e2 at this point in order to avoid an immediate mate but now would come queen g5 check, knight g3 and simply queen takes c5 as loose knight is picked off and this wins back the piece with a crushing positional advantage. So after Svidler's king f2 Carlsen again found the strongest move which was knight d4 here, at move 25, Svidler resigned, seeing no way to meet all of the threats with which he's faced. Um, knight f takes e6 with discovered check. 
uh, is one of them. Also very strong is uh, Knight D5. Again with discovered check. And uh, Queen takes C5 is a third threat in the position. This move Knight D4 has uh, made this threat also real. Um, and it achieves nothing for White to take on D4. He, he simply loses after Knight takes E6, e6 check. Uh, for example, if uh, let's see now, let's say uh, Bishop takes D4, now Bishop takes D4 check, Rook takes D4, Knight takes E6 with discovered check, King E3, Queen takes C5, and White is hopelessly lost. However, Swidler resigned too soon. There is a saving resource in the final position. If you want to try and spot it, I'll get it here now. As uh, 94 was the last move, then uh, stop the video now. Knight d7 is the move, as now the knight is no longer attacked by the queen and uh, any discovered checks can be answered but knight takes f8 and both players miss this move during the game black still retains the edge despite being a piece down after uh, knight h3 with double check so this time the king does have to move there's no uh, knight takes f8 but this check is far less dangerous than the other ones uh, king g2 is forced after which comes queen c6 check Bishop d5. If instead the uh, king takes h3, white is getting mated after queen takes e6 check. So uh, bishop d5, queen takes d7, rook takes d4, and not bishop takes d4, queen g4 is mate. So rook takes uh, d4, the best play continues to e6, king takes h3, bishop takes d4. And now bishop c6, and not bishop takes d4. Or black answers e5 with discover check from the queen. And a one position after king g3, and he takes d4. So bishop c6, and now queen d6 with uh, good enough endgame chances for black. With um, a rook and a pawn against two minor pieces. It's, uh, it's looking pretty good and there's a definite edge here although it's you know, nothing concretely winning in less than 10 moves or anything like that but he should be able to grind out a win from this position but like I said both players uh, missed the uh, saving move for white so it was uh, a great game from Carlson despite the early resignation from Swidler the bishop sacrifice certainly livened things up so I hope you enjoyed it please leave any comments or thoughts Thanks very much.